and why one of Britain's biggest councils could face a massive payout after a protest by thousands of female workers. More than 4,000 workers, the vast majority of them women, have won an equal pay claim against Birmingham City Council. Lawyers representing the group say the authority might have to pay more than £600 million in back pay. An employment tribunal has found that bonuses paid to men on similar grades were discriminatory. Let's get more now from Phil Mackey, our correspondent in Birmingham. So what was the difference, Phil, in, in pay for men and women? What are we talking about? Well, quite significant figures, George. It's amazing to think that it's 40 years since the Equal Pay Act came into force. And yet here in Birmingham, in one year, a female care assistant took home £12,000, uh, while a bin man on the same grade took home £51,000. Now, all that should have ended in 1997, when local authorities and trades unions reached an agreement. Nothing really seemed to happen until people started taking legal action. The biggest case was here in Birmingham, simply because it's the largest local authority in the UK and employs the most people. Uh, so today, part of the legal team that acted on behalf of those women said that today's judgment had been a long time coming. Well, this means that women working for Birmingham City Council have got justice after quite a long way, decades in fact. Uh, they've suffered pay discrimination over a long period of time. Um, they were either given a pittance to keep them quiet or given nothing at all, uh, and we've seen justice prevail today. Now, they reckon that many thousands more women might come forward and launch fresh claims. Birmingham City Council said it can't say exactly how much it might cost it, uh, but in the meantime, they're still considering whether or not to appeal. George. But thousands of women who worked for Birmingham City Council have won their claim for equal pay. The employment tribunals ruled bonus payments made to men but not women on the same grade were discriminatory. And the decision could mean significant payouts for workers, costing the council as much as £600 million. The council is now considering whether to appeal. And why what I think they were wrong, yes, and I'm glad, I'm glad everything's been sorted and that we're going to get something out of it. I was very annoyed and very upset at the time, you know, but now that they've done something about it, I'm pretty happy about it. I mean, I worked as hard as them and I've been working a long time and uh, to think that they got more money than me, you know, is, is, wasn't very good. There's a lot more than me, like, you know, there's other people besides me that's entitled to that money and I think it's great that it's done some good. I think that... You try to take my house away from me, mate. Thanks. See, we're going to lose our house. house. You're going to end up in poverty. You're we're at a night now where everything, everybody can't get a job and everybody's a load of depression. And you're under a night. We've had a bit of a problem with rats and so forth as well, you know. And people have seen them around here. It's not very good for my business. It's not good for anybody, really. It's certainly not pleasant for many people. And one expert believes there is cause for concern in the worst affected areas. I think this is really starting to be quite a health hazard now. Because the bacteria and fungi are really spreading out and no longer contained in the environs of the bin and the bags, it's spreading out into the general environment. And I must admit, I'm starting to get quite worried. But striking refuse collectors say the public are still behind them. They're trying to pay them children's wages. I know, that's it's right. Disgusting. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. The council here is trying to equalise men and women's salaries but unions say that means big pay cuts for some. One binman who didn't want his face shown says he's been told he'll lose about a third of his income. I earn 18,000 at the moment, and it would go down to 12,000, um, which is 5,700 they're taking off me. And what effect would that have on your life? My mortgage would go, I'd have to move, probably move into a council house. I'd have to get rid of my car, I'd have to, I'd have to cut my cloth very accordingly, because I, I have three kids, like, and they get everything. But the council leader here is adamant that no one will lose a third of their salary. Contractors have now been brought in to provide a basic service. But in this street, that means the first collection in four weeks. Although the council is aiming to clear the backlog over the next few days. Now, the council say they're very keen to settle this dispute, but won't enter into negotiations until the refuse workers go back to work. But they're saying they're not going to do that. So for the time being, here in Leeds... It's stalemate. We've had a Already the rubbish is piling up. More than 500 bin men and street cleaners are on strike in Leeds. And here's why. This man, who asked to remain anonymous, told us his salary is being cut from £18,000 to just twelve. He has a wife and child to support. Families are going to split up because of this. People, are, it's that desperate. People think that, you know, that we're doing this just for an inconvenience. It's not. We're now that desperate. 
The standoff in Leeds is increasingly bitter. Equal pay legislation means the council, like every other local authority, must ensure each of its workers is fairly paid for what they do. That's meant the re-evaluation of thousands of salaries. And while some workers will gain, others inevitably will lose out. Some councils have implemented the law to little protest, but it's led to scenes like this in Birmingham last year. And in Edinburgh, bin men staged a work-to-rule protest because of council plans to cut their pay. No way, no way, make the key council pay. And here in Leeds, the bin men and women have vowed to strike indefinitely because they claim if the pay cuts go ahead, they'll be, in the words of one union, plunged into poverty. Her job is dirty and it can be dangerous, which is why this bin woman told me she deserves her salary and she can't afford a proposed cut to £12,000 a year. We've got mortgages, we've got children. How do you justify, do you know, losing, how do you cut back at losing £3,000 a year? How, what do you cut back on? So why is a female worker losing out in the name of equal pay? Now this all stems from a law brought in more than 10 years ago designed to make sure council workers were fairly paid. Now it's not about gender, it's about roles. Each council must look at each job and decide just how much that worker is worth. How do they decide that? Well, Leeds Council have used criteria like how much knowledge a job requires, how physically or emotionally demanding it is. Some will benefit. In the past, one of their so-called caring professionals would earn around £11,500. That's now been reviewed and will rise to more than 14000 But around 2,500 workers will have their pay cut, and that includes several hundred refuse workers. It's not caused by us, it's caused by having to live within the new Equal Pay Act. And if we go outside the constraints of that, we lay ourselves open to huge uh, legal costs, potentially, which could bankrupt the council. No way, no way. And it's not just Leeds. Plans to bring in the equal pay legislation in Birmingham led to these scenes last year. In Edinburgh, bin men have been working to rule because of planned pay cuts there. And in March, this teaching assistant in Sheffield told us she feared she could lose thousands in pay. But that council has yet to formally restructure. In Leeds, though, the bin men and women have vowed to strike indefinitely because they claim if the pay cuts go ahead, they'll be, in the words of one union, plunged into poverty. Jenny Hill, BBC Look North, Leeds. Thank you very much, Jenny. Well, you've been writing to us in your scores, emailing and texting us. And uh, I suppose we can say that the overwhelming people seem to be in support. But many of you are saying, how can the council do this? Well, to answer that question, in the studio now is employment law specialist Louise Conacher. First of all, is it legal to reduce somebody's pay if they continue to do the same job? No, it isn't. It's illegal to do that. So um, if a council were to try and do that to the employees, they would either be able to walk out and bring a claim for unfair dismissal, constructive dismissal. Um, they could also bring a claim for the pay that they'd lost. So yes, it's, a, it's illegal for them to do it. So are you surprised it's got to a strike stage, bearing in mind that the law would seem to be on the bin men and women's side? Yes, I mean, I think what, what they're trying to... What, what the council are trying to do, presumably, is reach some sort of deal with the bin men where they will be perhaps compensated in some other way. A lot of councils have reached deals with people, so perhaps they've paid some compensation in return for an agreement to accept the new terms and conditions, which is what it requires. It requires agreement from the bin men. But the bin men on strike, as far as you're concerned, can't be sacked. Well, what a lot of councils are doing is... Um, trying to negotiate the changes in pay and some councils have actually said if you don't accept it we will dismiss you. They are then trying to um, presumably raise an argument in tribunal that they had no choice other than to reduce the pay because the pay reductions that they are implementing are introduced 
because they need to equalise the pay between men and women. And what they're saying is we've got no money to pay extra money to the women, so we'll have to reduce the men's well, pay. Well, it sounds as though some councils, and I'm not just talking about Leeds, mm. are going to spend a lot of money on, on legal representation from people That's like you. absolutely right, absolutely right. I mean, as you saw from, from, from that clip just there, um, Edinburgh, they're, they're on strike. There was a situation in Brighton where... All of the bin men took the bin wagons out into the middle of the street and, and, and blocked the whole city centre. So this is not going to be easy to resolve? Not at all, no. Louise, thank you very much for talking. Thank you. Your colleagues are calling you out. We want your support on the streets. The road to equal pay has been bumpy and complicated. Councils have increased some workers' pay and cut others in their efforts to level out male and female wages across a whole range of jobs, from dinner ladies to dustmen, clerical workers to carers. There have been strikes and anger, which still lingers in many places. Single status, as it's called, is now in place in many local authorities, and they've got on with the job of sorting out restitution to women who've been paid less than they should have been for equal work. Thousands of women across the region have lodged claims for back pay for the money they've missed out on going back to a maximum of six years. Where councils have disputed the claims, they've usually ended up here at the Employment Tribunal in Birmingham, although most have reached negotiated settlements before getting this far. But all the time, legal costs have been racking up. The biggest case heard here was Coventry City Council, brought to court by the union Unison. Coventry Council imposed single status on its workforce in 2005. The unions rejected it, took the council to the tribunal and won. The council appealed and lost, but the council is now going here, the Court of Appeal in London, still fighting to prove that its single status working arrangements are fair and proper. Its spending on legal fees is now one and a quarter million pounds. Yvette Moore has been a school cleaner for 31 years, She's one of more than 600 low-paid women working for Coventry Council who intend to claim back pay, but she's still having to wait, now almost five years, while the legal wrangling continues. Absolutely disgusted. All the money that they've paid out for barristers and lawyers could have paid some of us the money that they owe us. I mean, we're all hard-working people, so I think we, d you know, we deserve it. Tracy Wells is a learning mentor at Holbrook Primary School in Coventry. She says the council's legal fight makes workers feel undervalued and unimportant. I just think that, um, you know, instead of spending all that money on um, fighting a cause that is a very good cause, um, they should be paying their people out instead of, um, in, instead of getting all these high-powered people to, you know, try and get away with paying out. But the country's biggest spender on the hire of barristers and solicitors, say Unison, is Sandwell. £1.3 million. Pounds. The union says it's a national disgrace. Sandwell Council has declined our invitations to talk to us, but they have issued us with a statement saying the idea that Sandwell is resisting equal pay for low-paid women is laughable. The statement says... Single status is a very difficult issue, hedged around with legal complexities, and we've taken time to make sure that we get it as right as we possibly can. This has inevitably involved spending money and time on legal advice over a period of several years. It continues, this will be worth it in the long run for council taxpayers. The unions may well say that legal fees are money down the drain. But Sandor says it's now ready to implement its single status agreement next January and it's already been settling retrospective equal pay claims. The highest individual payout is £31,000. The average is almost 7000 It's council taxpayers who'll bear the cost. To compensate 4,000 workers, Sandor Council's been allowed to borrow £36 million absorbed into its budgets for future years. But in Coventry, the council fears the costs may be so high, it could mean job cuts. The tourism business that comes from the seafront is very important to Bournemouth. So it's something the council spends time and money on and employs people to look after.
It has other responsibilities too, like housing and waste disposal, for which it also needs a workforce. But the pay for men and women in that workforce isn't equal, and the law says that must change. Achieving that equality, though, is proving very painful for some. I, like other people, have got a mortgage and a family to support, and the effect is just devastating. It's a massive chunk of my take-home pay,、uh, and I'm now worried about the future, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to survive, and how I'm going to support my family. I quite like the unions to back the staff, really, not the council. This council employee, who wants to remain anonymous, stands to lose thousands of pounds from his salary. Under the deal, if members accept it, around 40% of staff will receive a pay increase. 40% will stay the same, and nearly 20% will have a pay cut one year from now. The union that's negotiated this deal says it's the best it was possible to get. It says there's a limit to how much the council can be expected to put in to pay, and it will do what it can to support those who've lost out. The important thing about this is it's about ensuring that people are paid fairly for the work that they do,、um, and the only way you can do that is by comparing all of the jobs using the same,、uh, the same tool, the same job evaluation system. So, should men be expected to take a pay cut in the interests of pay equality? Yeah, it should be equal pay. But I don't think men should have to take a pay cut to、uh, sacrifice that. Definitely equal pay. Yes. Yeah. And what、um, about men taking a pay cut for it? Um. Yes. 